Yeah, so it's a very interesting topic and I'm grateful to the scientific chair and the organizers because I'm guilty of never uh, addressing recreational drugs in any of my patients with type 1 diabetes. So at uh, I mean, I think if I recollect, I must have talked or answered if someone asked me about alcohol and my answer would usually be no alcohol. So after I read a lot, because this topic was allotted to me, I have changed. And now uh, I think all of us will after my talk that we must address, we must talk to the patient. It's their choice finally. And a rec what is a recreational drug? It's a drug that people take without a me medical reason. Different drugs have different effects on the body and the effect that a drug can have on a type 1 patient uh, of diabetes will be different from the effect that drug which uh, will have on, a, on somebody who is not diabetic. Some drugs also have come downs. So what is the word come down? A period of time after taking the drug when patient experiences a low mood. This can impact his motivation to look after his type 1 diabetes. I would reiterate recreational drugs are best avoided in type 1, but there is not enough research into how recreational drugs can affect the blood sugars in a type 1 diabetic patient. This is a very bad term, I feel, recreational drug, because recreation is a fun activity. While here, it's, uh, so it, you know, it suggests that drugs can be fun and drugs can be safe, but nothing is further from the truth. All drugs are dangerous. They alter the perception of reality and diminish ability to reason. Drugs create both psychological and physical dependence. Of course, re uh, recreation is a legitimate activity where we are all meeting, discussing, talking, hobbies, etc. The patient should know. So this is my premise. The patient should know what he is taking. It's best for the patient to research on what he is taking if the doctor can't help. You and surprisingly, he should be instructed not to take the drug alone. Like Dr. Archana said, there should be a buddy. Now, I'm not propagating drugs, but I'm saying if they are taking it in small doses, particularly certain recreational drugs. And when you research the recreational drug term, it includes nicotine also. It includes caffeine in larger amounts. It includes alcohol. So, he should always wear his medical alert. Never stop taking his insulin because it could lead to high blood sugars if, or even hypoglycemias. Now, what are the effects? There can be a hypo. Some drugs can slow the patient down or some drugs can give him more energy. In retrospect, I remember a patient who would run a mock. He would run away from my clinic and the parents would run after him. And I did not realize that he was on a psychoactive drug. And in retrospect, I feel, and then we found out that he was on some drug and that is why he was like that and later when he was sent to the psychiatrist and to a de-addiction place he performed much better so again today my the you know the actually what I want to re-emphasize is that we should not forget to address this question in a type 1 diabetic patient so people over 18 can legally purchase some recreational drugs like I said alcohol tobacco and surprisingly, cannabis, which is bhang. So now, cannabis is very interesting. The leaves of cannabis plant, you can actually make bhang out of it. And it's legal because Shivji, when he drank after the Samudra Manthan, when he drank all the halahal or the poison, he used cannabis for or thandai. So it's mythology, uh, mythological. And yes, in a lot of mandars for Shivratri and for Holi, cannabis is legal. Bhang is legal. So here lies the catch now, from the cannabis leaves bhang is legal, but from the cannabis resin you make charas and from the cannabis seeds you can make ganja. So, you know, there's a very, uh, very, very subtle difference between what you can do with the same cannabis. And in Delhi, again, now that my mind knows, my eyes can see, I do remember people putting some powder in their cigarettes and that is now I know it is cannabis. And uh, it's uh, also called weed. So there are several names. It can be called weed. Hemp is actually available in Uttarakhand. Hemp is also cannabis. Hemp seeds are supposed to be, you know, be good. Probably they cause you some amount of euphoria of the feel good. And that is why maybe they are recommended. So you're more likely to forget your insulin dose. Obviously, you have to tell the patient because if he's euphoric or feel good, he might forget his insulin. He may forget to eat and get a hypoglycemic attack. 
He's a, at a greater risk of high blood sugar, therefore ketosis, ketoacidosis. This was a very interesting study in the AYAs, the adolescent and the young adults with diabetes and about 504 patients it was found. Of course, this is a study in United States, 40% endorsed substance use within the past 30 days and imagine we don't even address something in which out of the 504, 40% of them said yes, they did take some drug. And mostly marijuana, because marijuana is legal in the United States. You have marijuana clinics where you can actually purchase the marijuana on the prescription of your diabetologist or endocrinologist. Now, if they take marijuana from the uh, drug stores and they become addicts, then they start taking marijuana from streets where it may not be actually that, it may be mixed. And when drugs are mixed, there are serious consequences. Now, what is the barrier to discussion of substance use? I think the biggest barrier is the parents always come with that type 1 diabetic patient. So, sometimes even when I want to address alcohol, and Dr. Archana pointed out, we, I, we don't even talk about uh, premarital sex. We only talk about marriage, even in our conferences, we talk about girls getting married. But now that the, uh, it's, not, it's very important to even address that, that's just deviating from my topic. But that's the problem. Usually parents come. Sometimes grandparents, there's so many people that, you know, you don't end up discussing uh, recreational drugs, alcohol, nicotine. You just don't make that conversation. Now, I'll just talk briefly about the drugs. Four main types of drugs are there. Again, my premise is not to tell you about each and every drug to talk about cocaine and to talk about LSD and to talk about uh, morphine. But what I'm trying to tell you is that to pick up this, uh, which drug the patient is taking, four main types, depressants. So among the, what will the depressants do? They'll slow down the function of the CNS in the brain. They will attach to the brain's neurotransmitter and increase levels of GABA, minob GABA aminobutyric acid. This leads to a sense of relaxation. And all type 1s are stressed or anxious. Depressants, of course, include benzodiazepines, hypnotics and alcohol. And we shall go back to our clinics. We will realize that, yes, people are type 1s do take a lot of alprazolam, etizolam, all these drugs for anxiety. And uh, so this is again important that we address whether the patient has anxiety, like Dr. Sh uh, Archana Sharda's patient. If they have anxiety, we can't brush it under the carpet. Whether it is performance anxiety, whether it's anxiety about having a girlfriend, losing a girlfriend or a boyfriend, not getting married, we must address anxiety because otherwise we are pushing them towards drug peddlers. And believe me, doctors, drugs are very easily available in schools and colleges. Outside schools and colleges, drug, drug peddlers are, you know, on the prowl. They're looking for candidates to sell these drugs to. In Delhi particularly, we know that Delhi University, I don't know about Mumbai, but in Delhi, there are a lot of places where drugs are easily accessible to the uh, patient. Now, stimulants. So you have depressants, then you have stimulants. They speed up your body. They increase uh, heart rate, body temperature and blood pressure. And in this category, of course, you have caffeine, nicotine, you have cocaine. This is from a plant in South America called the coca plant. Then you have MDMA. This is a methamphetamine. And of course, some of the ta slimming tablets. If you have diabetes and you take a stimulant drug, you of course have a greater risk of hypoglycemia because you'll burn more carbs than usual. So then you have drugs like analgesics, the opioids. You have patients taking cough syrups, codeine. Then of course, opioids are naturally derived from the poppy plant. You also have artificial lab uh, generated. Heroin, morphine, fentanyl, although it's an anesthetic. And we do remember the story in our own Gangaram hospital where fentanyl was used and uh, it would disappear from the cupboard. And then it was found out that one of our residents was using the fentanyl. So he was an addict. So I think I again say it's an eye opener for all of us that drugs are there. It's not a problem only of the West. We do have drugs. And I see in my clinic a lot of patients from the North who don't snort or smoke. They rub it on their gums, the powder. So there are several ways in which drugs can be absorbed. So then the third category is the hallucinogens or psychedelics. These are most dangerous drugs. And they alter your mind, your senses and your emotions in this LSD, PCP, magic mushrooms, ketamine. 
and of course very high dose of marijuana or cannabis all this they can do several things then just a little line about marijuana is the most commonly used recreational drug this is what in india is called bhang or charas like i told you bhang is from the leaves you pound the leaves and the flowers and char uh, ganja is from the seeds and charas is from the resin of that cannabis plant and where we are now cannabis is grown a lot so the legend is that cannabis has lot of uh, good properties mythologically so it's legal in some parts of india now alcohol we will we should discuss so just one or two slides i still have 4 minutes what do you instruct you have to actually make the conversation that uh, as a type 1 i would not like you to take alcohol but would you like to take it that's a question a we should have because all the time you can't refuse suppose the patient is ready and says yes then you have to tell him eat a meal with carbohydrates before you drink make sure your friends recognize a hypoglycemia hypo is more common because they're dancing when they're taking alcohol in the bar or in a party wear a diabetes id because even if you had half a glass of liquor you get a hypoglycemia and you are found unconscious nobody will imagine that you are diabetes with hypoglycemic attack that is why you are unconscious they will call you an alcoholic and they will throw you in the nearest police station so this is the biggest challenge with the type 1 diabetic patient who drinks in my mind he doesn't have an id he will be declared an alcoholic and sent to the police station and nobody will check his blood sugar so it's again very important that if you're taking alcohol you should be supervised your friends should know it and your parents should know about it so it's good to tell the pa patient that yes we'll talk to your parents because usually the parents also take a drink or two so you can actually have a very very fruitful discussion with the parents about alcohol then check blood sugar before you start drinking during the uh, taking alcohol which may be a 2 to 3 hours during the party and also check blood sugar after hmm? nahi no. okay so <laughs> i do that no i to uh, we'll tell the girlfriend or the boyfriend to check so that's important because usually they party with their friends so we could tell a friend to check and uh, check your blood uh, next day also you should check because this is very interesting even if they're getting a hypo it may feel similar to a hangover because in hangover also you get a little nausea a little tachycardia you don't know so it might be a hangover while friends i want to tell you i'm a teetotaler and a pure vegetarian and this talk <laughs> is uh, interesting for me because uh, like archana said she was imagining herself as a type 1 for 2 weeks i was imagining myself that if i if i was on drugs but it is difficult to imagine <laughs> because it's not easy to so i think i'll quickly sum up give me two more minutes while consuming alcohol increases the risk of uh, hypo we know there are ways to reduce it eat some carbs at the beginning you we can teach the patient carb counting eat carb and also it's important to teach them about counting the carbs in the alcohol so it's important that they take the alcohol and if they mix it it should not be with coke but with diet coke you can bring down the calories the carbs from there so this again is very important i think uh, we should share this that these are the calories and these are the carb counts so in a glass of red wine which is the serving size is 5 ounce which makes it 150 ml 30 ml in an ounce here yeah, there are 3 to 4 carbs so if he is taking insulin it should be according to the carb counts and look at vodka with coke and with diet coke vodka with coke is 1 uh, ounce which means 30 ml has 13 grams of carb and if you don't take uh, the coke you just take a diet coke then it has no carbs so there lies the difference you should also teach them not to mix drinks not to take drinks even from their friends to make it themselves so that's important this is about the medical management we should tell them that if you take alcohol the first slide i think it's a crowded slide that your liver we can simply explain that your liver is now busy metabolizing the alcohol it's not uh, taking part in gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis so no breakdown of glycogen no new glucose formation and you might get a hypoglycemia if you take alcohol without taking a meal so it's very important for the type 1 diabetic patient to know what they are drinking also when a type 1 diabetic patient drinks without eating and uh, the blood sugar rises the body might switch 
two fats as source of energy and he might land up with ketosis or ketoacidosis. So both things are possible in type 1 diabetics are hypoglycemia as well as severe hypoglycemia and diabetic ketoacidosis. So I think I'll not, yeah. So I think I'll wind up and my message is that we should lead the discussion, normalize the discussion, talk about recreational drugs in a type 1 diabetic patient. We should not shy away from the conversation and it's not a problem of the West. We see more and more people now who are type 1 and do take recreational drugs.